Now, I wanted to just briefly touch upon the grading scale that we use for papilledema. And this is something that we use clinically in our practices. And we use this also to help um, uh, monitor patients. Um, if they've been diagnosed, we monitor them as they're being treated to see how they're responding because this is a, an indirect correlate of what their intracranial pressure may be doing. So this Friesen papilledema grading scale is a scale from zero to five. And I showed you what a normal optic nerve looks like. In grade zero, basically there may be a little bit of elevation of the optic nerve border, but it's not fully swollen. So in this diet, in this picture right here, you can see that the majority of the nerve, the borders are very sharp, but down below, right at the inferior aspect of the nerve, there's a little bit of haziness. So that's actually swelling from raised intracranial pressure in this patient. And that is a grade zero papilledema optic nerve. And so it may on first glance look normal, but if you look really closely, you will see that the nerve is um, focal swollen. Now we actually use other imaging uh, diagnostic technologies also to grade papilledema. We do objective measurements of papilledema. We use a, a um, machine called an OCT, optical coherence tomography. And I'm not going to get into the technical details of it, but basically it's a non-invasive scan of the optic nerve head. And it provides us with a color-coded report of whether the nerve is normal, whether it's been damaged or thinned, or whether it's swollen. And um, we can actually measure the amount of papilledema um, and someone's response to treatment. We can monitor that using OCT as well. Um, normal, I don't, sorry, I don't have a picture of an OCT here to show you, but normal OCT measurements is are anywhere from 80 to 120 microns. So many patients with papilledema may have slightly higher than that. They may have, you know, 125, 130, that's mild, but some people have OCT measurements that are in the hundreds. 200, 300, 400, even 500 microns of swelling that can develop from raised intracranial pressure. Um, so now moving on to grade one papilledema, again, this is the Friesen grading scale. So here, um, basically now you can really start to see the swelling of the nerve. You see this kind of halo around the nerve and it looks kind of um, blurred, uh, whitish uh, in color. And so in grade one papilledema, that swelling goes around um, but it spares the temporal aspect of the optic nerve head. So it's not a 360 degree swelling, it's 270 degrees of swelling of the optic nerve head. Um, so you can see these are all various different um, uh, patients with grade one papilledema. Um, on the bottom right picture, you can see the vessels are extremely tortuous. This is something we see as well, where it's not just the optic nerve head that has these changes, the blood vessels also start to look engorged and congested. Now in grade two papilledema, that swelling goes all the way around. So now the swelling is 360 degrees, but the key here is that the blood vessels are still identifiable. Um, we can still follow the blood vessels out as they're leaving from the center of the optic nerve all the way to the retina. So these are two examples of grade two papilledema. Now in grade three papilledema, what you're seeing here is a swelling. It just looks more angry. It looks more um, congested. But in grade three papilledema, some of the vessels as they leave the optic disc margin begin to be obscured. So basically there's so much edema that the vessels are no longer clearly defined. So this is a grade three, these three pictures are grade three papilledema. Now you may ask, you know, what is that on the bottom right-hand corner? Why does it look white? You know, what are those white kind of fluffy cotton looking um, uh, areas? So those are actually called cotton wool spots and those represent ischemia. So um, the cotton wool spots can happen at any stage, even in grade one papilledema, you can get cotton wool spots, but basically it's ischemia of some of the nerve fibers as they're um, usually around the optic nerve or on the surface of the optic nerve. We can also see hemorrhages, um, which I think I've shown you in some of the previous pictures that can also happen in any grade of papilledema from one to five, usually not in grade zero, but one to five can have hemorrhages and or cotton wool spots. Now, grade four papilledema, you can see it's looking angrier and angrier. So in grade four papilledema, we um, uh, have a hard time distinguishing the, blood, the major blood vessels as they're leaving the surface of the optic nerve. So all of these are grade four papilledema. You can see um, there's differences in the exposure of the, of, the, of the images, but the one on the bottom right looks very vascular. You see there's a lot of um, 
telangiectasia on the surface of the nerve head, again, really implying that there's so much pressure from behind in the CSF space that all of those capillaries are engorged and dilated and they also leak. Um, they're very leaky um, when they get to the stage. But this is grade four papilledema. And then grade five papilledema is really when the nerve just looks like um, completely swollen where we really can't make out any landmarks on the surface of the optic nerve. So there's really partial or total obscuration of all vessels on the surface of the optic nerve. Now, if you read in the textbooks, grade five papilledema is usually described as a champagne cork appearance. Now, why do they call it a champagne cork? Well, I would think that it's probably because if you did a cross section of this, you have the nerve coming from behind within the dural sheath. And then when it gets to the uh, into the eye, it basically explodes like a mushroom because there's so much swelling and pressure from behind. So on cross section, you could call it a champagne cork appearance. But when we actually look on our fundoscopy, we don't see the champagne cork. All we see is the surface, you know, a two dimensional picture basically on the surface of the optic nerve. So um, well, there's also one other stage of papilledema I did want to point out. It's not part of the Friesen grading scheme, but this is atrophic papilledema. And in this case, what's happened is that the papilledema has been going on for so long that the nerve has been damaged and basically the fibers begin to die. And once this happens, once the fibers begin to die off, the axons um, die, that's irreversible. And usually atrophic papilledema is associated with severe vision loss and or even legal blindness. Um, and this is basically an indicator. This has been going on a very, very long time. The nerve axons have been permanently damaged. And fortunately, there's only a really small percentage of our patients who come in in this stage. The majority of our patients who come in with IIH come in at a much earlier stage of papilledema. So it's good that we have time to intervene and start their treatment. But once you get to this stage, it really is a medical emergency. And oftentimes these patients end up needing surgery, even if it's heroic rescue surgery, some of them do need surgery just to see if we can try to regain any of their vision that they've lost. Um, the other thing you can see here is that the nerve doesn't look that elevated anymore. It's actually quite flat um, when it gets to this stage. And um, that kind of whitish uh, material you're seeing around the nerve, that's actually what we call gliosis. So that's um, an indicator that there used to be severe papilledema before, the swelling has resolved because the nerve axons have died off, but what's left is this gliotic material and it almost looks like, um, like a veil, kind of like a very thin, fine veil over the optic nerve head. The vessels also become very thin and attenuated in atrophic papilledema.